Well, good weekend, all. Ira Epstein, and here we are with your weekend edition of your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up is for Friday, the 19th of April, 2024. Well, what a week. Uh, a week ago, tomorrow, we had seen that Iran had attacked Israel. Today, we see that Israel attacks Iran, and it appears that everything's dying down if you go by the press of both countries. It just appears that the tit for tat has taken place. Both realize they can strike each other, and that's all that matters. I don't care if the missiles don't get through. It only takes one to get through with a big warhead and you got a lot of problems uh, from both sides. So they've proven that they can hit each other, and now I think it goes back to the proxies doing the fighting again, and maybe this is where things sort of simmer down in terms of direct contact between Israel and Iran. That doesn't end the turmoil going on in the stock markets because they are wild. And I mean, you, you had last night, obviously, uh, and I'm talking on Friday, on, uh, Friday, it was Thursday going into the evening because that's when these attacks took place. And if you watched it all night as I was, it got wild. I mean, down 500 and some of the stock indices then back up. It was crazy, crazy action. And the market realized what happened. You get to see that in a large way in energy prices, which hit a high of 90.78 in the Brent and finished this, the day out at 87.29, but it got down to 86.16 after all that. You can see how this all worked out. Pretty crazy action, no question about it. So now what we're left with is looking at this coming Friday, a week from today, we're gonna get the PCE numbers, and that's one of the Fed's favorites. Generally speaking, it comes in a bit less than the PPI when you look at how they've all come out recently. So we'll see if that's going to be the case, but we'll get ideas about it during the week and what it might mean. Obviously, what we know where we know where we're at, and it's higher for longer. The question for some is: is that is higher mean? July, and for others it means, is it September? And for some traders it means, no, there's no reason to really see the Fed cut this year unless you really start seeing the economy weaken and labor going back up, unemployment. You haven't seen that combination just yet. When we look at the S&P 500, you have to remember where we were, and let's go back here if we could, just to this week. You finished out the market at 5308. You were down this month. I said week, I'm sorry, for the month. For the month, you are down right now 5.74%. That's a big break. Did we find buyers? Not really. The market, as you're going to see here, if we come to the weekly chart, down quite a bit to 50.03. So we've had a heck of a break in the market. Uh, you're down almost 6%. During the whole week, what was I showing you on the weekly chart? I said, I think you're going to go to the weekly 18-week moving average and tell me you just about didn't do that. I mean, literally right there. So I'm comfortable that the market has fallen into a support zone. That does not mean it's necessarily a buy zone. We will see where the traders eventually show up. Could this market be headed for a 10%, a real correction? It's only another just over 4% and you're there. So keep that in the back of your mind. The pattern is one where you ended this uptrend. Now, I like to walk you back here because traders often don't realize that if you were long during this, you were doing all the right things. The first time that a problem showed up was with the outside day to the downside. Do you see that? And then that follow through sort of put in the play that if you don't get over this fairly fast, you've done a couple of things. Number one, you've broken the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Number two, you've broken a trend pattern. You can almost visually see it if you drew a line there. How far will it go? Well, the one thing up to this point, and I think you realize it, 2% breaks were difficult to come by. And for the week on that week, you were down 1.6%. Okay. The week before, if we come in together here, let me come to this one, actually I wanna do this one, was you were down 1.05 and then 1.63. So you were getting onto your first 
almost two and a three quarter percent re, uh, break in the market. And the question was, would the traders show up? So this was the week of the 12th. Now you add to that this week, the washout, and they didn't show up. So you're in a correction phase of sorts. Now, a real correction by market technicians in stock indices is called a 10% break from the highs. You haven't reached that. There's a pullback in the market right now into a support zone. I don't see an uptrend. I see downside bias since you're under the 18-week average of closes. If the market wants to drop again, the next big support is the 4,700 level, which is where the lower Bollinger Band is, and momentum has turned down. So during this rally, if you'll recall, you had your embedded reading all the way in place, even through last Friday. You only just lost it this week, but you've already hit the downside target. So as far as I'm concerned as a market technician, void of a trend, stepped out of an uptrend, had a pullback in the market, and you're at a support zone. That's what it's saying. When you look at the Dow, bit weaker in the sense of a chart. So if you and I step back on this chart, we had more warning in this chart. This particular chart lost its embedded reading on April 5th. And again, an outside day. If you haven't taken my outside day course, go to our website, irapstein.com under education. It's right there and learn how you work with this. And again, higher lows, higher highs, right into the upper Bollinger Band, for those of you that don't believe Bollinger Bands, and there's a number of them. And then the market last week here, and I said, just like I'm saying in the S&P, if the market can't hold this zone and wants to work lower, the next target would be wherever the lower Bollinger Band is. You're not too far from it, making your run at it. So same thing there. When we look at the NASDAQ, a difference here. A true downtrend developed on a weekly chart because now you got the lower highs, lower lows, and you're under the 18-week average. You could be slipping back to the 16,547 level, momentum down as well. And in the Russell, you went to the whole support zone. You went to the 200-week average, the lower Bollinger Band, all in one big swoop. How many points has this market dropped just recently? Let's take a look if we could and come back together here. Let's see if I can get this to do it this way. Here we go. I'm going to come to this. Whoops. One more back. That's what I wanted to be. So you're here. You had gone up 2.5% for that week. The very next week, you're down 2.96%. 3% the next week. And remember this pattern, just what you've got in the S&P now. And if you go down even further, potential targets, and I would have said this right here. So we're down almost 6% at this point, and here is what you just did. You went down another 2.9. You're almost at that 10% area is what I'm saying. But this is big, important support. A 200-week average is not something you throw around lightly. It's very important. And when you put it with the Bollinger Band, you have a support zone. Is it a buy zone? Absolutely not. But it is a cover short zone for a lot of the traders that might have been along the way selling the market. Now, in the five-year notes, 10-year notes, they all look the same. Bearish, they're at lower Bollinger Bands. They can lop onto this and keep going. Other than short covering, I see nothing on the horizon to get these markets to rally other than they're down to the Bollinger Band and they might get a bounce from there. But all look to me still very much in the bear camp. In the dollar, if you looked at my report, it's off the website already. If you'll recall Tuesday, I started talking about take a look at my euro currency report because the dollar index is made up over half of the value is made up of the euro currency. So if you're long the dollar, it's one way of being short in a different way, the euro. Uh, and the euro hasn't yet thrown out a true sell, but you got a lower low, a higher high. When we look at the market here, lower highs, lower lows right into the 100-day average, along with, if you take a look at it, the Bollinger Band. So I can see on a weekly chart why the market's stalling here. But is this market going to go down to the next support zone of our price counts of 103.50? That's a big question. 
In the Canadian dollar, a cover short area began last week when you hit the lower Bollinger Band. You are oversold, but you could embed this week. If you embed, even going lower, in my opinion. Dollar's reigning king. I think you see that. And as much as there was trade talk, I was, the, I think, the lone voice out there saying the pros will press the yen until we see intervention. They won't believe the words, just how it works. The first time, you talk it up as the central bank, oh, you know. Second time, eh, by the third and fourth time, and that's how many we've gone now, you don't listen. And they'll just press. Now, at any point, you can walk in, there's intervention, and the market's 100 points the other way. You've got the embedded reading. The trend is down. The bias is down. Zero reason as a technician, other than intervention, for this market not to make a run to that lower Bollinger Band. Bitcoin. So the halving event takes place tomorrow. So for all the effort you as a miner did, sometime, I don't know the hour it kicks in, but it kicks in tomorrow, you have to put in double the effort to get a Bitcoin. So double the cost and all the effort that you're putting in there, you'll see some miners disappear in the game, but that should be friendly and the market will see if it starts responding to it. Each of the other times it has. In Brent versus WTI, so far it hasn't been able to get back over on a weekly basis, that 18-week average, which means what? WTI has been gaining on it. That's what it truly means. Now, when you take a look here, you can see how the market slipped back. I don't understand why you'd be, want to be super bullish now in WTI or Brent off of the war threat, the war threat. That's gone. I, I really believe that Israel and Iran have reached the stalemate status and they both don't want this to go any further. So now it's what goes on in the Mideast. That doesn't mean you can get oil through uh, the Red Sea. I'm not saying any of that at all. But I think that part's gone. We'll see how the market responds to it. As I told you, the first move over a 100-day average is often tricky. Can you stay over it? And you can see that the market is fighting a big battle at that right now. Same in WTI. The trends are up. They can lose the bullish embedded readings. If they do, and they do it at, by the end of the week, you're probably down at the 18-week average. I don't know what would lift it here, because I do believe that uh, now you've just lifted the war premium. In gasoline, wouldn't surprise me if you want to backtrack to that 100-day average. But sooner rather than later, we're going to see the pressure of spring driving and summer driving demand come back into the market. I talk about this and a heck of a lot more each morning in my Morning Futures videos. And in those videos, we open up over 40 charts. We look at daily and weekly charts. I try to come up with trade recommendations, entry points. There's not something to do every day. And other days, there's so much to do, I can't get through the video. It gets longer and longer. We cover all the areas of the futures markets, and we back it up with special reports from time to time. It just did one in the euro currency. I'm going to do another one this week, by the way, and other markets that you might want to see. In addition, you can get different parts of our research as our clients. You get to use our, as part of all this, you get our phone app. So you can uh, see a text if you want of it, or the email comes in and you open it up. It'll play there for you and away you go. How do you get this? Go to irapstein.com. Go to the word research. It's all there for you. Or move your cursor up here and give it a click. I'm Ira. You have a great weekend. I'll catch up with one and all this coming week. Take care.